The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. In this episode of Postcards... My advisor found out about my photographs and told me, you're an art major, and I was like, oh. But there's a little piece inside of me that was like, yes. Probably the, the darker side of it, but it's more of a dark humor. Biology really inspires my art mostly through the patterns that I can observe. I want it to be able to breathe and see the process that I'm doing, because really, the process is the product of my work. I think when you do art, there is this way of communicating that you can't communicate with work. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. I'm Lucy Riffle. Um, I'm from Virginia, Minnesota, which is up north on the Iron Range. And my preferred mediums of creation are printmaking and drawing. When I was growing up, I always kind of thought I was a little bit more artistic. I was always like, that kid that can draw. If anybody had a cartooning request, they would ask me. And I took a lot of art classes throughout high school. My high school didn't offer many, but I was also in community college taking PSEO. So I took some there, and when I came to Morris, I figured, Studio art, that's the way to go. <laughs> it's a U of M campus, which I was interested in being from Minnesota, and it's pretty far away from my home, and I was interested in getting some distance just to experience a new part of the world, <laughs> even if it's not that far away. Um, I guess a way I would describe my art without having to see it is um, very minimalistic and design concentrated. Um, you can tell I'm putting a lot of thought into composition and every individual mark because I don't make a whole lot of marks. I want it to be able to breathe and see the process that I'm doing because really the process is the product of my work. My creative process mostly consists of thinking in my head. Um, I take a lot of time to think about what I'm doing before I make any marks print anything out or even make a sketch of anything. I take a lot of inspiration from the design and really anything I see every day if I see maybe like a spot on the sidewalk but I really like where it's placed within like the square that will be like, ooh, that would be a great composition. I should work on that. Um, so it takes me a long time to kind of think about the best and most minimal way I can show that inspiration. I think drawing has a really wide range of things you can do with it. I mean, I draw with paint, and I still don't consider it painting. It's just mark making, which I think is more drawerly, I suppose. And I like the physicality of it. I like to be really involved in the process in my drawings. Printmaking is a little bit more detached, but I still feel like I'm very involved because you physically have to pull the prints. You're making all of these things, but you have a little bit less of your own hand in it, and I'm interested how that contrasts with my drawings. Yeah, I think living in rural Minnesota for all of my life, even if it's in two different parts, has heavily impacted my work. I feel like if I was in a city, I would be creating just as much, 
but I don't think I would have the concentration to take the same time I do out here to really think about everything so long <laughs> before I make a mark because in a city there's so much to do and so much to pull your eye and all of that. Um, and I think rural Minnesota, maybe the sparseness of the community has kind of inspired more room in my work because there's more room to breathe out here. A project that I've worked on this year is Twist. It's a triptych with three screen prints. I took a class in Icelandic language and got to go to Iceland. But on my way out, I took a loop through Scandinavia. So these photos were taken in Stockholm, Sweden at a theme park I stumbled upon while I was there. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I was taking these photos. I was just like, these are really nice compositions. Um, I know I'll use these for something. So I came back to Morris uh, in the fall. Thought I would try something new and delve into CMYK printing, which is splitting an image into basically primary colors, tan, magenta, yellow, and key, which is black. I was really drawn to taking pictures of the theme park because it had a kind of older feel to it. And I really like that. And I think in terms of printing, they turned out to look kind of nostalgic, a little bit like sun-kissed, a little faded, like a memory. And I think a lot of my prints have that quality. And I was kind of arranging them to see if I could display them together or if they would have to be separate pieces. But they made this really great line in the middle, and I was sold on it. I feel like working in abstraction, I want them to take away whatever they want to. I always have a very set idea of what things are about and then people talk to me and it's totally different and it's kind of like, oh, but it's like good, at least they're getting something out of it and that makes me happy that they can appreciate it in their own way. To quote one of my favorite artists, her name is Agnes Martin and I'm a little bit paraphrasing, I don't remember the actual quote, but she's creating things that are completely abstract as to provoke completely abstract thought. My name is Isaac Johnson. Uh, my hometown is Stillwater, Minnesota. I uh, use primarily screen printing for printmaking processes, and then on top of that, I do drawings. I said just been like making art my whole life and drawing, but not really in a serious or like professional way. I really wanted to study it and sharpen my skills before trying out for opportunities in the real world. I do a lot of work in a graphic style, I guess you'd call it, much like a graphic novel. So lots of dark uh, blacks and reds and whites clashing up against each other. Visceral um, can be angry, uh, can be very uh, flat and emotionless. I guess what I'm really trying to do is elevate what's considered low art, like think of advertisements, um, things that are really commercial and uh, overproduced as well. So my art's kind of a way of filtering this constant bombardment of images from everywhere, internet, television, billboards, and turning the design elements from those images into something more. There's the conception of the idea, and then uh, generally there's a lot of thinking about it and kicking it around in notebooks and sketchbooks before really act on anything concrete. Just to make so sure. I like to have things pretty well planned. The Stump series is a series of prints that I'm making um, from these photos that I'm taking. And it's kind of like a, a con conservationist awareness thing. Because um, here you have these things in nature that aren't really natural anymore. And they've been either cut down in their prime or they were old and deteriorated. Uh, nevertheless, we find it necessary to go out and cut them down, clean chop them, and then we're left with like this blemish. I've been walking around uh, outside and finding specific stumps that I find aesthetically pleasing. And then I go and take um, photos of it from different angles, and then I have chosen one and done uh, two editions in this series, um, each with one stump. Process-wise, it ends up being uh, like a finding process, finding the right stump, uh, photographing it the right way, and then um, putting it on the computer and digitizing the image 
um, and manipulating it to suit my printing needs. Um, and then it's broken up into different layers, uh, one layer per color. And then I choose a specific color palette for each print as well, one that complements this dump. I found they have a lot of uh, character. I make sure to keep the colors really unnatural. So these aren't like photorealistic prints. Um, they're synthetic. They're meant to feel uh, kind of manufactured. And that's very much the process. I think r living in rural Minnesota has lately been influencing me more and more. But um, initially, it had little to no impact on the things I was creating. My attention to my surroundings, I think, changed. Um, and the direction of my art has shifted, uh, mostly in screen printing, towards more natural imagery. And uh, there's plenty of that around here. So. I do enjoy the, the darker side of it, but it's more of a dark humor to the work. It's, uh, there are serious parts to it, but it's not meant to be uh, alienating. It's meant to kind of envelop you in a familiar, unfamiliar world. Mine is an, an aesthetic that's kind of about not having an aesthetic specifically, um, so it tends to be very concept heavy. But I enjoy playing with all of those uh, concepts and themes. <laughs> Mostly I just enjoy the process of working on a project and uh, seeing it change and seeing how it is different from when I initially came up with the idea. It can be very difficult and it's a lot of work. <laughs> But I enjoy doing it, so. I'm Kate Macklett. Uh, my hometown is New Richmond, Wisconsin. I work in mediums that are raw and natural. They kind of translate their own uh, voice. So I work in charcoal. I work in um, encaustic. You can see the beeswax medium. I also work in multi-mediums. Things that inter are interactive with my audience. So before I started working in caustic, I was taking pictures of ink and water. And again, this is kind of an, and it creates this global imagery. You just capture this moment of this ink and this water, like moving around, you know, and it's something that I can't totally control. I have an ability to, to a little bit control what moment I pick, where I put the ink, but it goes. And so encaustic is another medium um, within the painting realm that does that too, right? So when I heat up this beeswax that has pigment in it, um, it moves and I can stop the heat when I, oh, that's the moment I want to capture. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna capture a different moment on this side. I'm gonna build this kind of world with multiple different forms overlapping, you know, so it kind of creates this depth of this abstract image. So I started out doing psychology um, and I, I did an internship in Duluth uh, where I shadowed a psychologist, clinical psychology, and that was the route I thought I was going to go. And I realized I didn't, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. Um, I didn't like the testing portion of it. It didn't seem very human or really interactive. Um, so then that's when I found art therapy as a, as a potential um, career route. And so then I started kind of delving into my creative path or um, you know, art in general. And I found that it really was a way to communicate with my community or with people. And people really responded to viewing it, to touching art, to doing art. Um, and it kind of facilitated this relaxation response to people that I kind of shared my art with. Here at Morris, I've done research on art and forgiveness. I think when you do art, there is this way of communicating that you can't communicate with words. It's another language. And so when you give someone the ability to speak something like emotions in a different language than explaining it verbally, um, they're really able to transgress beyond um, where they could have before. You know, and, and when I do this project with them, um, they're able to kind of experience this new relationship with maybe that, that life struggle they're having. So I kind of investigate control within my art. I like using mediums that I have to kind of like have this narrative with, you know, so that, like they have this strong voice and, and I'm working with them to create this story, right? And so I don't have complete control. I'm not trying to do figurative art. I want to do abstract expressionalism. I want to express emotion I'm having or the process of me making something. Um, so that's why I go for more of the abstract 
um, aesthetic piece. I first like to say I'm not an art therapist. You know, so I, I don't claim that, but I do have a background in meditation, facilitation, um, when I'm painting and encaustic, the beeswax medium. Um, I take a deep breath, I let it be my meditation, my time to really experience this moment and be present. And so when I'm teaching classes, um, like my expressive relaxation throughout class, that's what I facilitate for others. You know, take a deep breath, relax, be in this moment, and be with this medium you're touching. Because the somatic experience, the, the senses, can really facilitate this relaxation. When I was younger, I had health problems and things like that. So my relationship to my body and my relationship with other people um, became highlighted. You know, it, it was something of importance. And so that inspires me every day to kind of investigate control, to investigate interpersonal relationships. You know, doing aesthetics that are kind of, they look like the world or universe. You know, that's an aesthetic theme that just invades my mind and I want to portray that to people and I want to give that to people. I'm doing this project for our senior art exhibit um, here at UMM and it's called Clean Slate. A statement or that originated from these slates that you, they would use in Roman times. Um, they'd cover slate with beeswax. You'd be able to write your notes, you know, in a collegiate area or you know, that kind of thing and then clean the slate. It's a table that I've built and I put beeswax on top of it and I'll have a plaque that says, forgive me for, and I'll have another plaque that says, um, if I had a clean slate, I would. And I want people to come and etch in the wax their response to these things. And then I'll come in during the exhibit to clean their slate. So again, it's kind of offering this intimate experience and I'm allowing them to, I'm gonna clean the slate for you. I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm Lauren, and um, I'm from Northfield, Minnesota. I work with both digital and drawing. So I've always been interested in drawing. It's one of my passions. It's one of the things that I do for fun. I like being able to create. Um, so I guess um, pursuing art in college was sort of the uh, natural thing for me to do. And um, just looking at kind of the world around me and observing, finding things in nature that um, interesting patterns, observing what kind of source material there is around me, imagining ways, the ways that these things work together um, in the universe. Uh, I guess that's one of the things that has really inspired me. Biology really inspires my art mostly through the patterns that I can observe um, under the microscope or just um, kind of broad concepts. Some of, I've incorporated uh, some of my lab pictures of um, DNA gels, also just kind of taking patterns from a broader source. It's just kind of has been something that has really inspired me. These sorts of um, aspects are really a good way to um, represent uh, science and technology um, in a visual way that people will recognize. Um, and I think combining the biological elements with uh, more man-made artificial element, it um, kind of creates a sort of a interesting dynamic between the two elements, something that is organic and something that is synthetic. Uh, and that's just something that I found really interesting um, visually and uh, conceptually. I think there are a lot of elements from the prairie that certainly come into play in my art. I like to draw like wispy grasses that I've seen around Morris, um, and those are definitely incorporated. So I think living in Morris has influenced my art greatly from um, sort of the subject matter, the subject matter that I've uh, drawn, as well as uh, sort of my uh, just being around the people at the university here. It's sort of a different um, atmosphere than uh, I've experienced in Northfield. Well, I've recently started uh, working on a project, a printmaking project, which is outside of my main uh, medium, but it does incorporate drawing um, and elements of painting, watercolor. I'm really excited about it because it incorporates elements of things that I've worked on all the way from my freshman year of college um, up until current times. My creative process usually starts uh, with sketching. I like to just um, 
whether I'm sketching something that I've seen in uh, just in daily life or if I'm sketching something that just comes to my mind, sort of patterns, more um, artificial sorts of patterns or things that, um, uh, patterns that I've observed in um, nature. Um, I start by coming up with these smaller elements and then I find ways to incorporate them into a larger composition and then I start to think about the meaning. What do I want the viewer to take away from this piece? Um, and then uh, once I know that, I kind of start to put all the pieces together that I've collected and then um, I just start to draw and that's the part that I like the most. So, The main concept that I want people to take away from my art is just that um, there is a big intersection between um, science and the art. There's value to both of them uh, and uh, I think that um, there's really value in anything that people study. Well, the next step for me, I'm not sure yet if I want to go on to study biology or if I want to go on to study art. Um, I know that I want to go to graduate school, uh, so what my plans are for next year is to um, hopefully get a job as a residential um, hall director at a university um, in the United States, somewhere in the United States. Um, and. Uh, um, gain experience of doing that and then in the meantime take classes and decide which path to pursue. Okay. My name is Nina O'Leary. My hometown is Buffalo, Minnesota and I paint and I take photographs. Well I came into school as a CMR major which is communications, media, and rhetoric. Um, I had been taking photos for a few years in high school and, and I figured that I figured that part out. So I was going to major in something else so that I would be well-rounded and have a lot of things to offer the job market. This is the best. I don't think I got through the first semester of school before I changed my major. Um, my advisor found out about my photographs and told me, you're an art major. And I was like, oh. But there's a little piece inside of me that was like, yes. I, I wanted to do this and I never put it into words. It was really scary because I wasn't the kind of kid that drew or colored all the time when I was younger. I, you know, my first drawing class here was my first drawing class and I was just terrible. So it was definitely an uphill battle, but um, I know it was the right thing for me to be studying just based on the way that I think about things. So I work in a lot of different styles in photography. I do commercial work for um, weddings, for seniors, engagements. Um, on the other hand, I do a lot of work for myself that has a more fashion magazine aesthetic. I'm going for an editorial look. And then on the other hand, I'm working with um, portraits that are informed by um, an interview right before. So I'm trying to capture really the essence of who the person is with, with these um, very personal portraits, but also with weddings, with seniors. These are things that you want to see who you were in that moment exactly. I began a project this year that's been in the works for since I came to college, so four years. The U of M Morris has a tuition waiver for Native American students. It's very unique. Um, most schools, you have to be a certain blood quantum, you know, a half or a fourth to get any sort of scholarship money. But at Morris, um, if you can prove that you're Native American, you can get the tuition waiver, which is a huge deal. Because of that, there's a lot of students here that um, have never identified as Native American before coming to school. Because, you know, grandma found the papers and you're 1 16th Native and you're here, and you know that there's other people here that are much more Native than you are. They grew up on a reservation or they look Native. Um, they have experience with ceremonies. Um, so it's a very um, interesting mix of people here that identify as Native American. And I'm one of the people that came here, never, I knew I was Native American, but I never really um, identified with it. And I came here and realized, who am I? I always just thought I was a white girl from the suburbs because I don't have these experiences and I don't look a certain way. And then I realized that there's so many people here that are hiding out, just like I was, like, oh, I hope a real Native doesn't see me. Uh, doesn't talk to me because um, I don't want to offend them, whatever. So there's this very interesting dynamic here that 
isn't present in a lot of other schools. So the idea behind my project was to create a spectrum both of phenotype and of experience. So what I've been doing is meeting with students that get the tuition waiver, talking to them about um, how they grew up, if they grew up on a reservation, you know, but also talking to them about, you know, what's your favorite part of the culture. And then after that, I'll take, I'll spend, you know, five minutes with them and take a portrait. Um, so then when you, you put all these things together in one big um, group, you get this vast um, array of different phenotypes, you know. I've got redheads, I've got blondies with blue eyes, they're native. Um, and I've got some people that look very native and they say, well, I don't know anything about my culture. And I've got people that are blonde, blue eyes, grew up on the reservation, practicing their life ways. So basically the entire idea of the project is for the reader, whether they're in the culture or outside the culture, to be able to say, wow, I really can't judge somebody's culture based on the way that they look or based on the way that they grew up. Because that's, um, that's kind of a, a problem that we run into both inside and outside of the culture. Well, how, how native are you? The first thing you hear in trying to justify that is very confusing and tough for people. A lot of people, um, when they're coming in for their interview, um, are very insecure, they're very unsure. I've had people that I can tell that they're looking to me to just say to them, it's okay for you to identify this way. There's a lot of people that feel like they shouldn't because they haven't gone through some of the struggles that um, their tribe has gone through personally. The biggest thing that strikes me is when people sit down and they look at me and they're like, I don't even know if I can say that this is who I am. And that's such a major thing to be able to look at someone and be like, it's okay for you to say that this is who you are. Do you have an idea for the postcards team? Email us, postcards at pioneer.org. Visit Pioneer.org for more information on postcards and other Pioneer productions. Pioneer On Demand has all of your favorite productions available to watch online at your convenience, including past episodes of postcards. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota. A relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave.